Hello students, my name is Dinder Singh and uh, today we will discuss about condensation in microchannels. Here I will introduce about the condensation in microchannel. The condensation is a heat transfer process. So ultimately is a heat transfer process in which vapor is cooled below its saturation temperature while it undergoes a change of phase from vapor to liquid. So you must be, you must understand what is the saturation temperature. It's the temperature at which the phase change occurs. That is from vapor to liquid or from liquid to vapor. If we go through the literature, only a few studies are available related to condensation in microchannel as compared to evaporation or boiling studies in case of microchannels. So same way, if there are fewer studies, related to condensation in microchannel, the models which are used to predict the heat transfer coefficient and pressure drop for the condensation uh, through small scale channels that is micro channels or mini channels are not available. So the uh, models which are available in the literature are not that reliable to. So we need accurate condensation heat transfer and pressure drop models well applicable to wide variety of working fluids microscale geometries and operating conditions. <coughs> Let's continue with the introduction. A continuous demand on effective miniature uh, cooling systems for high heat flux application encourages researchers to investigate two phase cooling techniques. So you should know about the two phase cooling techniques. For, uh, in, the, in the past, in the past we have used single phase cooling techniques. In which, in which we use single phase coolant, single phase, that is uh, the most uh, probable example of single phase uh, cooling fluid is water. In the previous times we used water as the cooling fluid, but now as the heat transfer requirements has been increased, so we are uh, shifted towards two phase cooling system, two phase cooling techniques uh, in which uh, we use two phase fluids like refrigerants. So, Two phase, flow in, uh, two phase flow in micro channels as part of small scale pump loop cooling system in cons is considered a promising technique for this application. As you can see in the diagram, in the diagram they have used four components that is liquid reservoir, a micro pump, a micro channel evaporator and a micro channel condenser. The micro channel evaporator here extract the heat from the very small component or from, from a very small space and it is used where there is a space constraint. In the same way, if we are extracting heat from a small surface, then we have to reject the heat at a small surface too. So we need a microchannel condenser. In this slide, I have shown the importance or advantages of using microchannel heat exchanger. The advantage of microchannels lies in their high heat transfer coefficient due to more surface area per unit volume and ability to reduce the size of heat exchangers significantly because of its compact size. The next advantage is its integration because it can be directly embedded to the component or machined into the component itself. So due to its smaller size, it requires less amount of refrigerant or we can say inventory for the purpose. The next advantage is its reduced weight. The weight is also very low as compared to other conventional heat exchanger. The last importance uh, is its effective flow distribution. The refrigerant or two-phase fluid used for the use as a coolant can is effectively distributed through all the channels if there are if we are using multiple channels. Uh, in this slide, I have shown geometrical features of rectangular microchannel. There are various classification of microchannels by different authors, but in general, the channel with hydraulic diameter less than or equal to 1 mm can be considered as microchannel. The two main parameters used to define a microchannel is its aspect ratio and hydraulic diameter. The aspect ratio can be defined as the ratio of channel width to its depth and the hydraulic diameter is four times the cross-sectional area of the channel divided by its perimeter as you can see in the equations below. It can be further defined in terms of height and width of channel as shown in the equations. Figure shows 
the figure which is uh, shown in this slide shows a microchannel cross section showing all the dimensional parameters of the microchannel heat exchanger like the height of the channel width of the channel height of the total section the length of the channels there are certain design parameters which affects the performance of microchannel heat exchanger these are listed as microchannel length microchannel depth and width number and density of microchannels the number of density means the how many parallel microchannels we are using in our case the microchannel thickness and spacing that is the thickness of the wall between two channels base plate thickness microchannel shape and profile because uh, in case of microchannel we are using different shapes i have shown only rectangular but we are using many type we can use many type of shapes and profiles plenum shape and dimension plenum is the section which is constructed just at the starting and at the end of the microchannels that is the plenum so different plenum shapes and dimensions are used for different requirement next is flow arrangement then construction material most of the time the microchannels are made of copper but other materials like silicon aluminum can also be used for the microchannel fabrication there are various application of microchannel heat exchanger i have shown some of them microchannel condensers are commonly used in automobiles these days microchannel uh, as you can see in the diagram that microchannels are you microchannel evaporators or condensers are used in automobiles microchannel chemical reactor is an emerging application in many industrial application due to its excellent mixing capability and controlled re reaction environment one of its application is in cryogenic system as you can see in the first figure that uh, cryogenic surgery is being performed with the help of microchannel heat exchanger and cryogenic cryosurgical probe it shows the treatment of cancer by cryosurgery using microchannel heat exchanger microchannel coolers are also now being used in commercial systems to keep to cool leds in laser dye technology based application air condition with microchannel condenser are commonly available these days the cooling of small electronic components can be done with the help of microchannel condenser in the last slide i have discussed why we are using refrigerant as a two phase fluid in case of microchannel heat exchanger other two phase fluids are also available but why refrigerant is always preferred and uh, in the first we can say as as microchannels are mainly used in electronic components so it's desirable that the coolant should be dielectric because if there is a leakage it will not damage the electronics so refrigerant is a dielectric fluid so it will not uh, damage the electronic component with a leakage next the pumping power required for the circulation of refrigerant in the closed loop is comparatively low than water next important reason is the boiling point of refrigerant which is extremely low so the refrigerant start extracting heat at much lower temperatures refrigerant is always desirable due to its non corrosive nature water can easily damage the metallic components moreover the organic material start growing inside the system with regular use of water the last we can say channel walls can be damaged due to erosion caused by the high water velocity which is not in case of refrigerant next we will discuss in the next lecture thank you